Hello Bits Brew, this is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk here with another painting tutorial and in this one I'm painting Bugman so yeah, really excited for this one um, I love the Bugman miniature um, I do something slightly different with him um, I printed out this little tavern table from Loot Studios and I'm going to have him standing on top of that which is really cool um, but the tutorial itself is how to paint the actual Bugman miniature and not the table although I do paint the wood of the table in exactly the same way that I paint the barrel on the miniature and that was just little details are pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed painting this one and I hope you enjoy watching it, so let's get straight into it. So here we have Bugman and as you can see I've got him in separate pieces to make him easier to paint and he's been given a grey sear primer. So we're going to start with the main colour which is a Runelord brass, so this is going to be for all of his armour and don't have to be neat at this stage, I'll thin it down just a little bit and just going to apply it quite aggressively all over, or uh, all over most of the miniature, like so. And then I'm going to take some uh, Retributor armour, and this is just for some other armour areas, just to break it up a little bit. Um, I'm using the box art for reference, and you can see there's a slight, slight variation on the brassy gold colours. And I'll be doing the um, backpack and axe as well at the same time. So I'm going to paint this little piece in the middle there. I'm sorry if the camera does go out of focus every now and then. I want to take some Iron Hands steel for the metal area, so uh, his tankard there. There's a few other little bits which will be this colour as well. Just very carefully just getting that in the gaps. And I've decided to do this little plate here and a couple of other bits as well on the backpack. So Rakar Flesh is going to be for the gloves. And just apply couple of thin coats of that to get a nice smooth coverage. Again, just being careful not to get it on any of them gold areas. Next up, I take Dryad Bark. So this is going to be for the barrel. Um, I keep calling it a backpack, but it's essentially just a barrel with a load of attachments. Um, I do the cap on the end in um, Runelord Brass. Um, I think I just forgot to do that earlier on, so that will be painted as well at some point. And then I'm going to just take some Agrax Earthshade and just apply it over everything. So all the colours I've done so far, they will all get this wash. Which is essentially why I've done all these base coats first. Makes it nice and quick and easy to give them a good shade wash all over. So I bad and black. So there's like um, some sort of um, bits around this barrel, I don't know what they're called, um, but they go around the barrel and they're all going to be black. And um, now we can go into layers and highlights, so rack off flesh um, on the gloves. So applying it all over, thin down, and just leaving the darkest recesses. So pretty straightforward there. And then for a highlight, I'm going to take some flayed one flesh. And again, I'll thin that out just a little bit, and I'm going to hit the highest points and the edges. So yeah, I'm not obviously not going for a high display standard here, but I'm just sort of my usual sort of tabletop standard for him. Take some Canaptec alloy just to highlight the Arunlod brass areas. And I do apologise again; it goes a little bit out of focus. Um, so we'll move clip to something a little bit better, not much better, but a little bit. But yeah, just hitting high points, edges, etc. And then we'll do the same on the Retributor Armour with Liberator Gold. So pretty straightforward. Just applying it in little areas. You can sort of see where the light naturally is reflecting off it. So I try and hit some of them areas as well. So I'll take Galvor back red now. And this is going to be for the sort of clothed areas. You could use the burgundy colour, which I can't remember what it's called. Um, that also works like quite nicely as well, and both colours are fairly similar, but the burgundy one is a bit more purple. Um, so I take some demon at hide now and thin it, right, thin it down, almost like a glaze, but just a little bit thicker. And yeah, I'm trying to replicate the box art, it's a very interesting sort of sort of shades they've got on there, so I thought I'd try some demon at hide. And because I'm applying it quite thinly, it's not going to be too of a, much of a stark jump between the two colours. And then I'll take Gene Steeler Purple and I'll thin this right down as well and just do like a little highlight. And um, this isn't perfect. 
Um, they probably have different colours that the um, Heavy Metal team used. Um, if you do know, let me know in the comments. But I'm fairly happy with how the results came out. So I take some Deepkin Flesh now. This is for the froth coming out of his beer. So a very important power for miniature, of course, is his beer. I quite like the Deepkin Flesh because it just has that slight off-white sort of greeny to it. Now I take some yand and yellow and thin it right down and just sort of apply it in little spots. Um, I do neaten it up with a little bit of Deepkin Flesh as well. So Battle Brown now is going to be for the, um, which I assume this is like a window into his barrel and you can see the beer in there. Um, that's what I'm painting that as. And I'll take some Rhinox Hide for the top half of it. So that's just sort of meant to be the sort of the inside. That makes sense. So we've got the beer and then we've got like the nothingness of the inside. I think the Rhinox Hide works okay. I'll take some Shabty Bone and I'm just going to do a thin line of this just where the two colours meet. Now I will say that I'm not 100% happy with how this particular detail on the miniature turned out. It still just looks a little bit flat and um, it's not an effect that I really sold too well. It ends up looking like a, at the moment it sort of looks like a weird coloured Pepsi logo. Um, I try and put a couple of little bubbles in there. Um, so I then take some um, Deepkin Flesh again and I'm just going to paint a fine line of this just to sort of, sh maybe sort of um, show off like a little reflection or something. Just try and sell the effect that this is like a glass, sort of see-through glass. And just thin line at the bottom as well. So again, let's thin out a little bit, just to, so it flows off the brush a little easier. Then I'm going to take some scrag brown and I'll thin this down to a glaze. I'm just going to sort of glaze it around the bottom. And this is just to give it a bit more depth as well and hopefully help sell that effect a little bit more. Um, so Iron Breaker is going to highlight the silver areas which I definitely didn't forget to do. So I plan to do it at this stage all along I promise. A little bit on the axe as well. We haven't seen much of the axe yet but we're going to see a little bit more right now. And I've just stuck it on this cork and I'm going to take some Dark Reaper for the handle. And I'll thin this down, I'll do a couple of thin coats, get a nice smooth base on that. And I'll highlight it with some rust grey. So essentially, um, just following the pattern. And I like to paint just like a couple of the sides. So I go along one diagonally and then the other. And then Bugman's Glow, would you believe? We're going to take some Bugman's Glow for his flesh. Um, could not not use Bugman's Glow on Bugman. Um, two thin coats, definitely. Um, always on skin, really thin the paint stone. And do multiple layers, we don't want to lose any detail here. So we get some Cadian Flesh Tone, which I definitely didn't forget to show you guys. And yeah, just a thin layer up. Just leaving the Bugman's Glow in the recesses. And then I'll do the same with Kizzler Flesh, just being a bit more focused for this one. So we're all going to have a little transition going up to it. And then we'll take some Flayed One Flesh for the highlights. And just little little dots of this. And we could thin it down a little bit more. I just sort of wiped away a little bit there, I think that's a bit too much. So I'll go back and thin it down. And just apply this very tiny bit. So I apologise if you go a little bit off camera as well. I really need to focus on them small areas. So I'll take some Mephiston Red and just put it right down to a glaze and just go over his little nose and his mouth. If you drink as much beer as Bugman, your nose is probably going to be a little bit red. So I'll take some Corvus Black for his beard. I really like Corvus Black. I, I like it a lot more than Abaddon Black. It's just a very, very, very dark grey. And yeah, I just prefer to use it. You could use Abaddon Black here. And I'll take some Eschen Grey. And I'm just going to paint um, the highlights here. Just leaving the Corvus Black in the recesses. So again, just be very careful. 
And then we'll take some Dawnstone for highlights. And again, just very carefully. And also, I do highlight the black on the barrel in exactly the same way as I do on the beard. And then I take some Gorefall Brown to highlight the brown on the barrel, because again, I definitely didn't forget to highlight that. And it was all planned to do at this stage all along when he's half assembled, I promise. And yeah, just again, just edge highlight him around with a Gorefall Brown. And here he is, standing on a table, looking smart with his beer and his axe. Um, yeah, really happy with how he turned out. Again, like, not going for like a really high display standard or anything like that. Um, but yeah, for a decent sort of, I wouldn't say high tabletop standard, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like how he's turned out. So for a video like this, um, I like to do them so they're easy enough to follow along. And they're a lot better painters than me on YouTube that you can f watch for really advanced stuff. But I do like to aim these videos um, for everyone. And yeah, yeah, really happy with how he turned out. Um, quite a quick paint job, really, because there's not a great deal of different colours on him. Um, and yeah, really like how the base came out. Again, um, as I said at the beginning of the video, it's just a 3D printed table. And yes, I think that's really cool. I think it works really well for him. I just want to do something different. And you sort of stand on this upturned sort of bowl of soup or whatever. So yeah, um, really happy with him. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video, if you have then do feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and um, let me know what you think in the comments and yeah all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching i'll see you again in the next video if you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already you can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel on the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our patreon page also Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.